Hi, welcome to Evidence for Faith. It's your host, Michael Lane. You ever think that little kids just always get in trouble? That nothing they can ever do seems to be right? When you were a little kid, say like uh, in 12, 13 years old, how you might have got in trouble at times and thinking, boy, my life is never going to go anywhere. Well, let me tell you a story and take you to a place in Jerusalem where a little 13-year-old boy named Nathan made a remarkable discovery. And this is one of the most amazing and most important biblical discoveries ever made because it supports the Bible that this is true, that it was written a long time ago. So join me as we go to Jerusalem and the Himnon Valley. We are standing in what is the Himnon Valley. And Right across from us over here, on which you cannot see the opposite side of where I'm at, is where the old city of Jerusalem sat. And there's a valley in between us and that, and it's called the Himnon Valley. It's mentioned numerous times throughout Old Testament scripture because it was a place where pagan worship was done. This is where child sacrifices took place. Even Ahaz, king of Judah, in First Chronicles talks about that he sacrifice it says that he sacrificed his son or, or have been passed through the fires as it actually says but we know that this was an area that there was a lot of pagan sacrifices to many different idols particularly molech and people were buried up here and what we're standing in are actually burial tombs from the first temple period now there was a, a archaeologist whose name was dr gabriel barkey he came over here back in 1979 looking for a place to dig. He'd been reading through scriptures about the, uh, in the Tanakh and stuff, about the old uh, graves and things that were here. He didn't expect to find much. He had a few volunteers, hardly any money for this. But he came over and he started digging in here because you can see that there's cut stone and things. So he started excavating this out. And as, um, in doing this, he got some volunteers to help from... Um, actually an archaeology club up in Tel Aviv. Um, a few children came to help him dig. He wasn't really expecting to find much. And they were digging around, and there was this um, one boy who was with him. His name was Nathan. And Nathan was always causing Gabby a lot of trouble. He was always coming around, tagging on his, his shirt and pulling him around about something. And he got very annoying. And Gabby was getting so upset with this kid <laughs> that he told him to go over into this tomb here and he says, clean it out. It had been used for centuries. This, um, it wasn't as big as it is today as you, if, um, when we look inside there. Um, it had a, a, a false floor and stuff at, this, at that time. They used to store rifles here back uh, during the, um, some of the wars taking place earlier, back in the early 1900s. It was a storage area, a secret place for holding rifles. A burial tomb is what it is. Now, as he started coming in and sending this kid in here, now, first of all, notice too, how small the openings are. These did not go up very high. To go into a tomb, you went into a small place. You would crunch down, go inside, and then you would be here. I would be inside of a chamber right now. And here, if you look in, um, at this large platform here, this is a burial bench. Notice that there's depressions here. One, two, three, four, and five. These are where people's bodies, when they died, they would come in through the opening, um, through an opening here, and they would lay the bodies here, the head fitting in this area. So you could see people could easily lay here. The length of an adult easily fits into this. There's another one right here that right now is filled with water. There's another one right here behind me. You can see the head position here. So people would come in and they would prepare the, burial, uh, the body for burial, and then they would place them here. And then afterwards, when the bodies decay, they come back and they would take the bones and take the bones and put them down below in a chamber. And they just just basically just drop them in there so that the bones of many people, many ancestors, it's a family tomb, would be mixed. That's where we get the phrase in the Bible. When, a, when someone dies, he went to be with his fathers. Doesn't mean in heaven, means that his bones are being mixed in with the other. Would put it but on this day, in 1979, Gabby was really getting annoyed by, by this kid named Nathan. And so he told him, you see this hole here? Go in there and clean it out. 
So Nathan apparently went in there and cleaned it out because there was all sorts of garbage and people had been throwing wrappers and things. And I, I remember reading that there were uh, 19, 20 beer bottles down in there. And as, they, as he was cleaning it out, he came back but, and he started nagging uh, Dr. Barkey again. And he said, send them back. Uh, he, he told him, go back in there and clean that better. And he says, <laughs> Nathan says, how clean does it have to be? And he says that your mom would cook on the floor and you would lick it. So the kid goes back in there. He knows he's in a little trouble. He grabs a hammer as he goes inside of here. As he goes inside, why do 13-year-old boys do what they do? I don't know why. When I was 13, I did some of the things I did. But he goes inside here, goes down inside this chamber here, starts hitting the floor. Now, Gabby, in the meantime, is overworking at a different place. And because he's the one to get some distance between him and that child. Maybe some of you parents understand that. And he uh, was overworking another place. And all of a sudden, there's a few minutes later um, that Nathan came out of the ground again and came up to Gabby and tugged on his, his shirt in the back. And he turned around like, oh, now what? And the boy was holding a practically intact piece of pottery dating back to the Iron Age. And Gabby says, where did you find that? And the boy took him back over here because he had broken through the floor. He had been sitting here hammering the floor down inside of here and the floor gave way and he fell down into a tomb. And the tomb has been reconstructed and we'll be showing a picture here. It's been reconstructed as to what it looked like when this boy Nathan fell in there. Now, when they did this, it was really a remarkable discovery because what they found was an intact tomb. As Gabby and his people went in there and they started studying it, he had some other um, people come to help him now because they started sorting out. There was ivory, there was gold, there was silver, uh, there were jewels, pottery, arrowheads, all sorts of things besides hundreds of bones. Uh, over a hundred skeletons, I believe, were found down in the bottom, all mixed together. And he, uh, because he found some gold and everything, he told everybody, made them swear to, to secrecy because he says, if, if this gets out, we're going to have a, uh, Jerusalem's going to have a gold rush, everybody coming here, digging holes, looking for gold. So it was kept very secret for a while. Now, after they had cleaned out much of the tomb, they found a small little rolled up, it, as Gabby looked just like a cigarette butt. But they, uh, he realized right away, this was, a scroll, a small piece, because of its density, he knew it was silver. He knew it was a silver scroll. Now, he didn't dare unroll it. It took uh, about three years for them to be able un to unroll this, to be able to see what was written there. And also during this time, um, another uh, archaeologist friend uh, that Gabby had come in here, a student, came in here. I think her name was Judy Hardley, um, or Hadley. She went down inside of here and found a second scroll. So two little silver scrolls among all these things. So. I mentioned that they found gold, that they found ivory and stuff, but the treasure wasn't even the silver, it was what was on these silver scrolls. The silver scrolls contain scripture from the Old Testament. Actually, from the book of Leviticus, and also they had some passages, parts from the book of Deuteronomy. Now, why is this so important? As I've traveled around at different universities speaking, on scripture and uh, authenticity of the Bible and apologetics. I've been uh, approached by many people, some college professors, is saying the Hebrew people never had a written language until after the Babylonian exile. This throws all that out the window because these scrolls date back to the time of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, and they contain holy scripture. Scripture was being written. Even um, uh, some other archaeologists, famous archaeologists, who doubted the authenticity of the Bible, who thought that the scriptures could never have been written down till after uh, the, the exile time, uh, the intertestamental time to the time of Jesus were, when they were being written down, always argued, many of them would argue, it was, they were never written down. This shattered all of their arguments. Because what is on one of these scrolls, as we show you a picture of it, um, I want to read uh, the translation from this. And this is what it says on this scroll. Now, if you have, if you're sitting there incapable of getting out your Bible, I want you to, to look for a moment at Numbers chapter 6, 
verses 24 through 26. It's going to be a passage I'm sure most Christians and, um, and Jews are very familiar with because this is what was inscribed on the scroll found down in the tomb. It reads, may the Lord actually, stop there for a second, where it says the Lord was actually the holy name of God. Um, Yehovah, uh, Yahweh, as a lot of Americans call it. That's what it says. So it's translated many times as people translate it because Jews do not write that name. Um, so they changed it to Adonai. So that's what we have. But it's, um, it actually has God's holy name actually written on it. But it's going back. It reads, may Adonai bless you and guard you. May Adonai make his face shed light upon you and be gracious unto you. May Adonai lift up his face unto you and give you peace. Sound familiar? Because it should. We see this in our Bibles. Um, Pastor, I used to um, have what back in the 1990s when we would do dedications and stuff uh, of children, he would always read that passage. At baptisms, he would read that passage. And the thing is, it's right out of Scripture. And notice how accurate this is. That's why this is so cool. It is an accurate biblical description dating back to the time of King Hezekiah before Solomon's temple is destroyed by the Babylonians. So don't let anybody ever tell you that scripture was handed down by oral tradition for, for centuries and centuries until it got till uh, the intertestinal time or the time of the New Testament or something. That is totally false. This is solid evidence. There's been other discoveries since this. This was in 1979, but other discoveries since then. And this is a fascinating discovery. Looking at the tomb, you can see the burial shelves. You can see where the repository on the picture in the museum, see the repository where the, the bones and pottery and all sorts of artifacts. But the way that they did, they would use these things. These benches like these here would be used for the body just to decay. Then they would come back and gather the bones and put them in with their fathers, as it says often in scripture. So if you ever get a chance to go to Jerusalem, place to find. Um, we walked quite a distance walking around here. Um, it sits behind the Bagan Center, and it is a hard little place to find. But what you can see, there are many tombs here. So it was just a fascinating find. Uh, Dr. Barkey had hardly any money. He just used students as volunteers, uh, children from an archaeology club, and made one of the greatest discoveries of the 20th century, what's called the Silver Scrolls. Hey, thanks for coming along to the Himnon Valley and seeing where one of the most amazing discoveries was ever made pertaining to Scripture. I hope you enjoyed this. Join us for some other uh, fascinating trips that we're going to be having to Israel. Maybe come with us in 2025 when we do our next trip. But until we meet again, take care and may God bless. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you to our donors who make this program possible. Evidence for Faith is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry based in the USA. You can support this broadcast by donating online using the links in the description. And don't forget to leave us a comment, a review, likes, and shares to feed the algorithm and help others find this content. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode.